What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So you saw the title, you saw the thumbnail. This is a collection of 10 fragrances that for me personally, maybe not for everyone, but for me, are almost perfect. They're my taste for said scent profiles and or just things I really enjoy smelling. Uh, these are some of my personal favorite fragrances. Fragrances that floored me, blew me away, are just phenomenal. Some of the best smelling aromas this nose has ever gotten a sniff of. So we're going to talk about these 10. Stay tuned. Starting with what I have long deemed as the best blue fragrance. Pretty much until Chanel gives me a Blue de Chanel elixir, which I don't know if they're ever going to do. I think Blue de Chanel Parfum is about as perfect of a blue fragrance for me as they get. It's not super loud. It lasts a long time. It's warm. A little resinous, woodsy smelling. Still has a citrus zestiness to it at the top. It's sensual, soft, professional. It's, it really radiates off of my skin with just the right amount of sillage. It's smooth. And even though it's got synthetics like Isoe Super, it smells like a pretty decent quality designer fragrance. So I'm such a fan. This really speaks to me as the most professional, well-rounded blue fragrance for my particular taste. I love the way this smells. I love the performance, the way it goes and matches. I think it goes hand in hand, really, with the scent profile. So if you haven't gotten out and sampled this one on your skin, I think you're missing out. And even if you have tried it, and maybe it's not for you, that's okay. This is, of course, just my personal opinion. But I like this so much more than the EDP and the EDT. It's not even funny. And that's Bleu de Chanel Parfum. This fragrance blew me away the first time I smelled it on my good friend Justin Copeland. And I had to have a bottle. And I have since done my share with hyping it for people to get their nose on for Tous Vanilla Oud. This is one of the most magical aromas I've ever smelled. It is so inviting and intoxicating. It's almost hypnotizing to smell this fragrance. Not too heavy on the oud funk. Warm, spicy, burnt vanilla smell. A little metallic, but not much, but very warm and spicy. You gotta like saffron. <sighs> so good. Oud and vanilla. There's some aromatic notes here as well. There's a lot going on. There's some real complexity, some sweetness and such, aside from the vanilla. I believe there's even a caramel note in here. But this is one that is to be experienced on skin. A test strip does not do the right justice. This is one of the most magical sillage experiences, wearing experiences, that I've ever had and I believe ever will have. I'm such a fan of this one. It's so captivating to me personally. It's almost perfect because I don't really believe there's a perfect scent out there, though I do have my one 10 out of 10 that I've ever given is in this video, which is technically perfect for me, but everything else we're talking about in here is about as perfect as it gets for my taste and especially fragrances like Vertus Vanilla Oud. One of the most recommended fragrances on this channel. I think it's one of the most versatile ever created, and I'm a sucker for a really good Swiss Army Knife kind of fragrance, and that's how I would describe Mancera's Cidrapoise. Unparalleled freshness meets woodiness, touch of leather. It's not all that animalic. Phenomenal alternative to Aventus, though I don't think this smells like Aventus, like it has been dubbed on the internet. I don't really get the relatability here. It's very sharp lemon. You have some fruity notes, dry woody smell. I've always said wicker basket full of fruits. That's what it smells like to me. Very alluring. High character, high compliment factor. You can wear this one in the summer. Just be easy on the sprays. You can wear this in the winter. Just spray a little bit heavier to cut through the cold a bit more. I get decent performance. It's not a monster. I get like eight hours of longevity. Hour and a half, two hours of decent projection, decent sillage. I've gotten many compliments over the years. And this goes perfect with everything. Casually dressed up, evenings, daytime, work, dinner dates, doesn't matter. It totally works. I'm such a fan of this one. And for me personally, it's almost perfect. It really is. I'm. There's a reason I constantly recommend this fragrance to people. Again, that's Mancera's Cidrapoise. It's a crying shame that they supposedly discontinued this one. I literally wore it within the last week. I think last week I wore this and got to relive the magic. It's such a great performer on me. It's, I think, 
the peak of Aqua de Joe's DNA, I don't think it'll be surpassed. It, it would be difficult for them to surpass it with Aqua de Joe Profumo. Profumo is one of the best designer fragrances ever created, in my opinion. You get a nice refinement to the timeless, most popular DNA that is Aqua de Joe from Giorgio Armani. You have the aquatic nose, the green elements, but it's, it's dark and smoky and a little earthy from some patchouli. It really gives it this unique character profile while staying true to the original's DNA. This is Aqua de Joe all grown up and matured and moved on to bigger and better things in his life. That's what Profumo is. That is so good. God, that is so good. And I know it's not for everyone, but it is for a lot of people. And it is absolutely a fragrance for me. I've always called it the mountaintop of this DNA. There's going to be a bias that's going to stick to it to where I don't think it can be top, no matter if they come out with another 20 flankers, which I'm sure there will be majority of them will be really good. I don't know if they'll have the impact on me the way this one did. And that's why I deem it to be almost perfect. I love it. I'll never run out of the bottle because I just have so many fragrances. I don't wear it all the time. But when I do wear it, it's kind of a magical experience for me. I'm just such a fan. Great fragrance. It's George Armani's Aqua de Joe. Profumo. Now, I just got this one this year. I had tried it when it first came out uh, back in late 2019, I believe. Um, I think it's superior to what it's a flanker of. And what it's a flanker of is a timeless, modern-day masterpiece. I'm talking about Aventus. But for me, Aventus Cologne is the superior fragrance. Even though I typically talk about how I prefer the smokier side of Aventus's DNA. This is reworked with ginger and pink pepper and musk as the stars of the show. This is a spicier, orange, citric type of take. It's not all that fruity as it is citric. Ginger, spice, pink pepper dominance. Love it. It's more woodsy. It's, it's much more musky, I find. Or let's say just as musky. But the ele the other elements really enhance it, I think. They just blend so well together. Um, just as musky as the original Aventus. Let's be fair about it, I guess. I just romanticize this DNA because I like it so much more. Uh, like, it's not close. I would take this 10 out of 10 times over Aventus. Um, I do get pretty good performance out of it. I think it's one of the more well-rounded, high-end luxury fragrances money can buy. Like, this is totally a phenomenal signature scent choice that you can wear for everything. It has a very professional feel while still still being a not to be ta doesn't have to be taken too seriously kind of vibe at the exact same time. Just magic. If you like more spiced, gingery type of fragrances, you'll probably enjoy this one quite a bit. I do think it's almost perfect. It's Creed Aventus Cologne. Now, I'm sure you've heard the term, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's what Triumph of Bacchus from Argos was. It ain't broke. Why are you trying to fix it, Christian? And I'll be damned if he didn't elevate it with Triumph of Bacchus x -trait. Um, It smells just like it, though I do get more spice out of this. This is a more robust take right from the start. Like, this is a darker juice than my well-macerated Eau de Parfum from a few years ago that has continued to macerate and age like fine wine and become more rich, just a richer profile, whereas this is already richer and stronger. It's 40% and a darker natural color juice from Jump Street. So over time, this is going to become absurdly powerful, and it's already a ridiculous beast, but absurdly powerful, and I can't wait to see where the richness goes with this, the apple, the peach, the spices, the woods, the, the tobacco's nice and earthy but not overdone, done, the rum absolute. This is so good. I wore it for Thanksgiving most recently. This, man, this is, ah, oh, it makes me happy to smell that. This is so good. This is so good. And it's crazy because I, I literally asked Christian in live stream, like, I don't know how you can make Triumph of Bacchus any better. And he didn't change the formula. He ramped up the oil concentration, and he did manage to make it a little bit better without sacrificing any of the magic of the original. So that's a big deal to me. So some, sometimes, even though it's not broke and you try to fix it, you find a way to fix something that you had no clue could be fixed. And that's a good way, I think, to interpret my feelings about 
the newest release, well, one of the newest releases from the house. From Argos, this is Triumph of Bacchus X-Straight. Now, this is an all-time great fragrance for me. I love incense. That's no secret. And I've become a, a big fan, quite the fan, of rose. And this is rose incense. It's magical. Not too many fragrances have ever gotten me more like memorable compliments where I've been stopped by people in grocery stores multiple times. It smells amazing on my wife. She's got her own bottle. It's, it's amazing. It's Zaharoff's signature rosé. It's my favorite Zaharoff fragrance. It's so good. It's different types of rose. It's sugary sweetness, warm wood oud without having any funk, ambery, very resinous and smoky. So intoxicating. This is a mesmerizing profile. It literally grabs people when I walk by them. And like almost takes them with me on my path. to. And it's not every person I pass by. But it's happened enough times to make memorable moments where it's like they just had to know. They were compelled. This is one of those types of fragrances. You want to be different? You want to smell amazing to everyone? Here you go. It's almost perfect. It really is. Um... Until further notice, this is my favorite from the house, and this is one of my five favorite fragrances that I own out of over 1,500 fragrances. That's how close to perfect I really believe this one to be. Performance is just right. It's like glue. It hovers and hangs around forever, and if you start to sweat a little bit or heat up or whatever, water hits it, it intensifies. It comes back to life like you just sprayed it. It's just like glue on the skin. It's crazy, but it is almost perfect. Zaharoff Signature Rosé. I was blown away by this fragrance recently. A uh, friend and longtime supporter of this channel, Jared Miller, sent me some decants. And he happened to send me a 10 ml travel atomizer of one of the best iris fragrances, possibly the best iris fragrance I've ever smelled. Aaron Terrence Hughes, Om. Oh my. I was blown away. I gave it a 9.75. Because I, I hoard the 10s. I've only ever given one 10. This is incredible. It's such a creamy iris. There's a little hint of waxiness, just a little bit, but it's overall super creamy. This is a Diorome killer. This is superior to Diorome because it gets compared to Diorome Parfum and Diorome Intense on the internet. And I think it isn't quite like either one. Like this is an animalic and dark and leathery quite like the Parfum, and it's not quite as sweet as the Orome Intense, but if I had to pick one that it's close to, I would say it's closer to the Orome Intense, but it's also not as waxy and lipstick makeup smelling. It's just creamier. It smells more like a rich orris butter than anything else. It doesn't have a heavy earthiness, but it's not, and it's got a little touch of waxy. Like I said, that lipstick smell, just a little bit of it powder bomb because it's iris but man this is magnificent clean musky a, a, just a little touch of soft wood so good and look this is there's like 8 ml in here that's going to last me a really really long time can't see through it but this will last me a really really long time thank you jared for sending this my way it is literally almost perfect it's aaron terrence hughes um now, speaking of those Dior Homme fragrances, naturally we're going to talk about Dior Homme Parfum because this is my other favorite iris fragrance that Dior, that Aaron Terrence Hughes Homme jumped into. Now, this is more of a leather animalic that dries into a creamy sandalwood. So this is a darker, more nuanced fragrance than Aaron Terrence Hughes Homme. I think they're wildly different personalities while sharing some similar DNA. This is this is special too. Like this is almost perfect. I love this. I have two of these 75 mLs. I seldom wear it. I wear them this time of year. I may wear it two, three, maybe four times a year. I don't wear it much. But I damn near melt every time I spray this bottle and smell this fragrance. It is amazing. It is so good. This is so good. The hype is so warranted and justified on Dior Homme Parfum. I have not smelled the 100 milliliter bottles that came around in 2020. This, both bottles I have are 2019 batches of the 2014 75 milliliter bottle formula. It's crazy strong. My most recent wearing was only two sprays and it filled my entire apartment. 
I typically do about four sprays when I'm going out into the world. It's a nuclear monster performer on me. I don't get the orange they list. I do get a little bit of rose oud leather, kind of this animalic darkness with the waxy powdery iris. That, and it transitions greatly into a very creamy sandalwood fragrance and you lose the darkness. So good though. So, so good. Refined without being too classy. It's almost perfect. It is Diorome Parfum. Finally, the only fragrance that I think is about as perfect for me as it gets. It is a rebottling of a phenomenal fragrance in Roger Parfum's Oligarch Parfum. This is Roger Parfum's Isola Blue. The only fragrance I've ever given a 10 out of 10 overall grade in a full review video. Not just the first impressions, like this was after doing some testing. For me, if I could only have one fragrance to wear for everything, there is no better suited fragrance for my personality, style, and taste and situation than Isola Blue. There's sweet citrus, greens, tropical notes, musks and woods, florals. There's so many things going on here. It's long-lasting, but not overwhelmingly strong. The previous version, Oligarch Parfum, was a more dense, stronger projecting fragrance. Similar longevity, same scent profile. And I just love, I mean, look, look at that. Look, so cool. Love the color scheme, but this fragrance... This is so me. I hold it in such high regard, I never wear the damn thing. That's the downside to being so in love with a fragrance. You're like, ooh, that's special. We're only going to wear that for certain things. And I shouldn't do that. I have way too many fragrances to be like that, but I can't help it. I hold this on its own pedestal. It's the only 10 out of 10 I've ever done. So it has, there's no other fragrance on its perch. I'm not saying there never will be again, but where it stands now, I really, really hold back on these 10 out of 10s. This is the only one that's not almost perfect for me. This is the perfect fragrance for me. All the rest of them are almost perfect. I strongly encourage you to try it. It's pricey, and you may not feel this way. Again, these 10 is how I feel they're almost perfect for me. Maybe not the case for you. That's why I would strongly encourage you to test before just going into a bottle, a full bottle of any of these, whether designer or niche. But if you never tried this, it's absolutely an experience that I firmly agree that you should have. The only perfect fragrance for me, based on the 10 out of 10, is Roger Parfum's Isola Blue. That's the 10. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Because I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. What is that fragrance that's almost perfect for you? Or is perfect? Like you deem this as like, this is the fragrance. This is the one. As long as I got this, I'm good. As long as I got these three, I'm good. Whatever it is, let me know down below. I'm curious to see what you guys come up with in the comments section for this one. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the 10 that I feature in this video and you give them a spray now, I am supremely confident that you're probably going to thank me later. Especially if you have similar taste to me. Because these are almost perfect for me. Have a good one, guys.